Hi, my name is Maya and welcome to the episode 20 yay, <laughs> of the Mila Instinct Sitting Podcast where I share all my thoughts, process and other random stuff about all things fiber related but mostly knitting. <laughs> so today is the 13th yep, of April 2024 and I'm coming to you from the French speaking part of Switzerland where I live with my gecko. You can find me on Instagram as milaris.things and you can find links of everything I talk about down in the description box as well as my measurements if you are interested. So today we have uh, quite a lot of stuff to talk about. So I have uh, a small finished object or maybe two I mean but yeah one. <laughs> I have one big work in progress, two small, and I'm gonna update you on the progress on my gigantic color worker blanket because I am at the halfway point. And um, I went to the Swiss Yarn Festival two weeks ago and I'm gonna do a small chit chat about that and I have a lot of acquisitions <laughs> from there, uh, which is kind of unusual for me. So. Yeah, for once, we're gonna have a lot of acquisitions. And I think that's it. Which is already enough <laughs> for today. So let's get into it. First, um, what I'm wearing. This is completely covered by my hair. <laughs> and this is the Ridgeview Tea by Carrie Bloomer. Yes. <laughs> And it's a cropped t-shirt, knit in DK weight yarn. There is a detail on the front, but not on the back, as you can see. And it's beautiful. <laughs> I love it so much. So um, I knit size, it's even smaller than size one, <laughs> but I'll talk about that later. And I used uh, Woolbury Fiber Company's Berry DK which is a 100% merino superwash base in the colorway Seashore, which was a pre-order from maybe two years ago, yeah, I think and I used a little less than two skins so yeah, pretty happy about this one and I don't wear it a lot because it's super cropped <laughs> and I like, I like cropped stuff, but I can't really wear that like to work uh, yeah, because yeah, my belly button is like down here <laughs> So yeah, it's not really work appropriate, which is a shame, but yeah, I really really like this one. As I mentioned, this is size smaller than one, <laughs> because actually uh, the positive is range did not work for my bust if I wanted to have the smallest amount of positive ease. Um, and I was using Superwash Yarns DK for the first time for a garment and I was pretty sure it would grow since this is ribbing also uh, it's a um, broken rib actually yes <laughs> so I thought it would grow quite a lot and I really didn't want it to have too much positivity so I emailed the designer and I asked her what should I do if I wanted to have something smaller than size 1 and she explained to me what I should do which was very nice of her, it was an easy mod and I did that and it fits me fine so this is obviously something I knit, obviously, absolutely not, <laughs> this is something I knit before I was aware of the fitting issues I have around my shoulders and back because I am very athletic, I have a lot of muscles on my back, so shoulders, sweaters, t-shirts tend to have fit issues around here. <laughs> and with this one, it's working nice, even though I chose my bust size, now I am usually sizing one, two or even three sizes <laughs> to have something that fits in the shoulders and there are three reasons or one but three <laughs> reasons why this one works even though I have chosen my bust size which I don't do anymore but in this one I did because it was before I knew I should size up but yeah <laughs> the reasons are uh, the big reason is because this is well designed <laughs> so this is not very nice to say for all the other sweaters I've knit that don't fit me, but it's a fact, this is super well designed and I'm saying that because there are three different things that make it fit me well so the first one is there is a um, shoulder slope like the shoulders are not absolutely horizontal they are designed to be like this 
which is exactly what happens on the human body, but for me it's even more sloppy, so this is very, very important for me. Uh, the second thing is, this is like, if I had knit shoulders, uh, I mean sleeves, <laughs> this would be a drop shoulder design, but there are no sleeves, but the principle is the same. There is like a rectangular body and then opening for the sleeves. But this one has increases along the edge here, which means the, the shoulder slope is slightly coming out, I mean down. And this is very important for me also because I have very broad, I mean my shoulders are fine but it's, I have a lot of muscle tissues on the back and it tends to pull the fabric in for me like this. And I hate when drop shoulders do this, <laughs> they just look too small. And in this one, since there are increases here, um, it kind of lessens that effect and it just falls perfectly on my shoulders, which is so nice and I love it. <laughs> And the third point is that this one has, it's going to be super difficult to show, but it has back neck shaping. Like the front neck shaping is when the collar dips down like this, which is obviously very important because your neck is coming out from the front. But the same thing happens on the back too. So you need also back neck shaping and a lot of designs don't have that. And for me, it's like mandatory. I can't have a garment that doesn't have that. <laughs> and this one has some back neck shaping and it just helps so much. Like there is a dip here. The shoulder seam is here and the back neck comes lower. You're probably not seeing anything but <laughs> yeah, that's it. So that's the reason why this one fits me so well even though it's a super small bust size. Um, and yeah, it's very important to know if you are like me and have pretty broad shoulder but a small chest. So yeah, that's it for this one. <laughs> there is one thing that I don't like, it's this detail, that I really get the why it's here and the idea of replicating this motif here, but it's just flip-flopping weirdly. <laughs> I'm not sure if I did something wrong, but it looks just weird. <laughs> I don't like it. But yeah, anyway, it's under my arm, so it doesn't really matter anyway, but that's the only negative point I could say about this design. Rich Beauty by Carrie Bloomer, absolute chef's kiss, super well designed, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so let's get into the first finished object. <laughs> finished objects I have for today, which are these. Ooh, they are so cute. <laughs> so those are pot holders, and this is the. Um, the pattern that the crazy sock, the crazy sock lady, <laughs> crazy sock lady does over and over again. It's the best turn on it, turn on itself pot holder. This is super hard to say. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's a crochet design. So basically, you cast on the chain here, and then you start knitting a tube, and then you fold the tube over and you sew here. You didn't see what I just did, but <laughs> you cast on here. Uh, crochet the tube and then you fold it and sew it here so it's turning on itself <laughs> and then you do the hanging loopy thing and you have a pot holder so this one I did first and you can see it's a little bit smaller I wanted to use the whole uh, bowl of yarn I have I had uh, this is Tissa Color cotton by Lang Yarns, and it comes on a cardboard thing like this, and it's a 50 gram bowl. And I wanted to use the whole 50 gram, but I had no idea how many, I mean, how big I was supposed to do it to use the whole bowl. So I just cast on, I mean, chained uh, 35 for this one. It's a free pattern, by the way, and I had this much left. I could have ripped it out, start over <laughs> with a um, bigger amount of chains, but it's okay. <laughs> I will find something else to do with this. Uh, so for the second one, because I had two balls, I cast on chained 40. So this one is bigger and I have only this much left, which is a an acceptable amount, <laughs> I would say, for me. Maybe next time I will push it and chain 41. But probably not. <laughs> now I have two pot holders that are not the same size. Probably gonna gift one. 
or give to two but not to the same person. I don't know. They are just here in the gift pile for whatever, for whenever I may need them. And I'm happy. It went well. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> so that's my finished object for today. So my first big work in progress is big. <laughs> and this is the wait <laughs> the teddy zip by Joan 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 Ho and it's amazing I am so excited about this one so I can maybe show you the swatch no first this is the design <laughs> so it's a jacket and this one is designed to be knit in boucle yarn alpaca boucle yarn and I am using Nutiden Hell Double plus one strand of Peruvian Highland wool. So the Nutiden is here. Oh, don't break. <laughs> so yeah, I'm holding them double. So this is a double wound wine. I can't talk today. Double winded bowl, hold together, and it makes this fabric. But the body is knit using four strands of Nutiden. Uh, this is what I have left. <laughs> so, pretty good call because, as you may know, Nutiden is impossible to get again unless someone distaches it. So I'm pretty, pretty happy. <laughs> this is yeah. I wanted to use up uh, leftovers and I did almost to the end. So it is so satisfying. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what I was saying is. I can show you the swatch so you can see what my, what's my plan. So this is the swatch. <laughs> so cool. So I'm planning to do... Oh no, I'm eating my hair. I'm planning to do the body in a color and then one sleeve... I mean the two sleeves in different colors. And obviously I have changed the color placement but the idea is the same. So I have the body that's in green and then I have one sleeve in red and I'm gonna have the second sleeve in black. And I have finally decided I will do the bottom ribbing, the collar, and the edging on the pocket because yes, there are pockets. Look at this! <laughs> so yeah, I will do the edging detail on the pocket here in charcoal uh, because I think it will tie everything nicely. So also, also the sleeve cuffs, I mean. So all the ribbings will be in charcoal. <laughs> And yeah, I think it will make it a more cohesive look overall, I hope. So that's the plan. And because in the, de in the design you are supposed to hold uh, the alpaca boucle with um, worsted weight yarn in the body and then uh, let go of the boucle and only use the worsted weight yarn for the ribbings. So the gauge is different, you are supposed to have a lot more stitches on the ribbing than in this one because of the gauge difference but I'm not convinced that it works with my yarns so this is ribbing with only the Peruvian and this is with the Marl and I'm not sure I like it and I tried to use so in this ribbing there is also the Nutiden uh, in the ribbing but I don't really like it either so that's why I decided to just change the color for the ribbings so that yeah, I, I don't know. I just preferred it <laughs> that way. Anyway, I need to sneeze, but it's not coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, in last week's episode, I had just started the body. I had like six rows. <laughs> and I was complaining quite a bit about the pattern being written in a weird way. Because there was, I mean, I was six rows in and I had already found four different ways to tell you to repeat an instruction, which is too much. <laughs> it's confusing for me. Um, and I have to say, the, actually, the pattern, I can now confirm that it's really well designed in the sense that if you follow the instructions without thinking, you are going to get a great garment in the end. So you don't really need to pay attention to the fact that the writing in itself is not very consistent. So it's not a big deal really, I'm just being nitpicky, but yeah, I'm just noticing that 
It's probably linked to the fact that I just need uh, Celine Phaeton design, which is like the queen of consistency and precise wording <laughs> in a pattern. So yeah, it's like a little bit like night and day, but it's still a perfectly valid design and it's very well written in the technical point of view and you're gonna get a great garment. It's just... The wording is not the best, <laughs> I would say. But it's not difficult to understand, it's just, yeah, inconsistent. But that's it. I have found some mistakes, but it's, again, not really anything that will prevent you from getting the final garment. Like, there was a place where it's telling you to knit the stitches from the holder, but the stitches were not on hold. <laughs> and there is one time where there is the pearl instruction that's missing, but it's kind of easy to understand what you're supposed to do. So yeah, it's just small details, uh, but I would still recommend the pattern because this is great. I mean, it's super cool. And the pockets and everything, and yeah, there are, there is some waist shaping that's really well placed, and yeah, I like it. Um, I did make some changes though, because uh, as I mentioned for this t-shirt, I need some shaping in some very specific places for anything to fit me, even if it's a super oversized jacket. This is size 3, by the way, <laughs> so it's like, I think, 30 centimeters of positive ease at the most. <laughs> uh, because this is, I want to wear this over my big oversized sweater, so it really needs to be huge, which is the case. <laughs> so the changes I made, um, the first one is that I made the back panel longer than the front, so that the shoulder seam sits a little bit to the front. And also because my back is much larger than the front, so I just need more fabric there. So if I hold it uh, straight, like this, you can tell the seaming is on the front. It's not exactly on the fold, it's definitely more to the front, uh, which is exactly what I wanted, so I succeeded in that modification. <laughs> in, I didn't succeed in the fact that I forgot to take out what I added to the back from the front. Um, for example, if I made the back two centimeters longer, um, I should have made the back and the front too, I mean, it's difficult to explain, but now my armhole is much bigger <laughs> uh, because I forgot to compensate what I have added somewhere else, basically. So my sleeve is super big. <laughs> I have made a gusset, I uh, also often do that because I will end up with bigger armholes because of the shipping I add. Um, and I will all often do cussets at the underarm to compensate for that, which I did, but the sleeve is still super big. <laughs> yeah, so I had to, as I mentioned, lengthen the back panel, do a gusset at the underarm, I have bigger sleeves, and uh, the most important is that I have added back neck shaping, because this one, I mean, there is the slope on the shoulders, they are not straight like this, they are slightly slanted, which is perfect. But there is no shoulder shaping, so the shoulders are like this. And then they connect in a straight line on the neck, which is not okay for me. <laughs> so I added... Something fell? Oh, it's okay. I added a dip, so maybe you can tell. It's very difficult to see. But maybe it's easier on the other side. If the seam is here, you can see it has a like a crescent shape instead of being straight. Yeah, it's actually easier to see like that. So you can see here there is a fold and here there is not. And the way I did it is with short rows, which is also a modification because actually the pattern is written to have the shoulder slope formed by uh, binding of stitches, like you are knitting, binding of, knitting a smaller row, binding of, knitting a smaller row, smaller row, which is basically the same as a short row, instead of, you are binding off instead of resolving the short rows. And I think the reason why it's done that way is pretty smart, is because it's using a uh, boucle yarn, which is hiding everything anyway, so short rows would first be difficult to read, and second, you can't see anything in the finished object. <laughs> So there's just no point in doing that. So I understand the binding of logic, but I am not using boucle, I'm using Huntsman, which is also kind of 
fuzzy and hides stuff, but not enough for me to choose mine off because I would have some ladders happening at the joint. So I did short rows and uh, instead of seaming the bind off stitches, I just did a three needle bind off with the live stitches. Uh, yeah, doesn't change anything anything to the shaping, but it's just what I did. So I have a clean, a clean look here at the seam. And the last modification I did is for the sleeve. As I mentioned, it's bigger, but I also added a lot more short rows to the sleeve cap because the way it is designed so you are doing the short rows only to here I think so you have a very small sleeve cap that's like this deep and it's not enough for me and what it does is I mean it's better than nothing but then you have this there is a weird there is a weird fold happening here at the underarm and if you do the sleeve uh, the sleeve cap deeper uh, you, this is less pronounced so I did the short rows to until the underarm which meant a lot more fabric <laughs> but there is a lot more fabric here but much less fabric down there so I'm not gonna get the weird fold happening here so I just continued with the same rate that was already established here I think it works pretty fine so yeah I think I can put it on I'm in the middle of a row <laughs> on the sleeve. Uh, my needles are too big to do a small circumference. And I mean, they are long needles like this. And I don't want to do magic loop for some reason. So I'm doing a traveling loop method. So I only have one loop going on, but I'm still in the middle of a row. So <laughs> yeah, I will try to not lose anything while trying it on. It's way too hot today to wear this. <laughs> My god, I'm sweating. So this is it. That sleeve is humongous. <laughs> my arm is like here. <laughs> it's more than two times the size of my arm. But yeah, it's designed... I want this to, to hold a whole sweater in it, so it's actually fine like this. And... Wow, it's so cool. I'm so excited about this one and the pockets. Can you get the vibe I'm going for with the blue sleeve and the black edgings here and here and the zipper going on? It's gonna be so perfect. And here you can see I have much less of the weird fold happening. It's, I mean, there is a fold here and here, but it's not like doing the, the thing like before, <laughs> like in the picture. So yeah. Wow. I'm so pleased. <laughs> I still have a little bit of extra fabric. This, that sleeve is definitely too big, but I think if I'm wearing something inside it, it's gonna fill it up more, so it should be better. But yeah. Wow, I like it so much. I'm so excited about this one. And I need this so bad in my wardrobe. Can't wait to be, to be finished. However, I think this is going to uh, take quite a long time um, because I have only one sleeve and half to go and I love knitting sleeves so it's going pretty fast and it's a super big gauge. This is like 6.5 millimeter needles which are 10.5 US um, but I also have the bottom ribbing, I also have the collar and I also have the pocket edging and the pocket linings two times and the lining for the zipper and that's a lot of finishings to do so I hope it will be over soon before it gets too, too hot outside which is already the case but whatever <laughs> yeah and I hope I won't lose steam because I know I hate finishing touches so I'm pretty sure once I get to the pocket lining and stuff I'm gonna get so bored <laughs> and I just hope I won't put this to the nodi corner and not touch it until next winter probably won't do that because it's not really my style but yeah that sleeve is pretty big <laughs> I'm not convinced I'm trying to convince myself I have, I have been thinking about it since I started like about here but Oh, there is another modification, by the way. 
I'm completely changing the sleeve shaping because this is designed to be very big until like here. It's supposed to be still big like this. <laughs> and you are not doing any decreases until there. And then you do rapid decreases, kind of. And I wanted to have a... I mean, this is so big. I wanted to have a gentle decrease line along the whole sleeve until the end and have a slightly smaller cuff than what's in the pattern. But you cannot see it yet. <laughs> but it's gonna be there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also hoping I won't ra run out because I have enough of the, of the red. But I only have two balls of the blue for the other sleeve and I have used one whole ball for this. So if I use more than two balls for this sleeve, I won't have enough for the blue one. So the worst case scenario would be I finish this sleeve, I use more than two balls, I have to rip out the whole sleeve, <laughs> rip back the shoulder sleeve and do the armhole smaller so that I don't have to do that gusset and I have, I mean, I will still do the gusset but then I will have a smaller sleeve earlier so that I can save yarn but I don't want to do that <laughs> because to be honest uh, to be honest for the short rows for the back I had to start over like six times <laughs> because I was trying to do them on the go but since they are sleeve short rows and neck short rows and sleeve short rows it's kind of it's not complicated but it's just easier to write it down so I just thought I would be capable of doing it without a note and I couldn't <laughs> So in the end, I had to write it down, so it's looking like this. So it was like, uh, which direction? Yeah, like this short row, short row, short row, then resolving half of them, short rows, he's resolving half of them, and then seaming the light stitches, which is easy, but I just needed to write it down <laughs> because it was just too difficult to do it with my three seconds memory. Anyway, I am dying. <laughs> this is way too hot. <laughs> So let me take it off, and I lost the ball, so yeah, I think that's it for this one. I hope it will be over by next episode, but I'm not sure. Especially if I have to rip back something, definitely it won't be over, but if everything goes well, maybe. We'll see. My next work in progress is uh, just a pair of socks. It's just a vanilla sock. I'm using a self-striping yarn by Fröhlich Wolle. I have the tag hanging out here. It's the special big blau band. <laughs> this is so old school. I love it. But yeah, this is what the sock is supposed to look like. And it's exactly what it's looking like. like. So this is the skin. And I'm knitting them, them for my boyfriend's birthday, which is happening in two weeks. And it's going fine, it's just a pair of socks. Um, I'm using uh, small circulars, 9 inch, 2.5 millimeters, and this yarn has the particularity <laughs> to have a reinforcement thread to hold with it for the heel and toes. I mean, you do what you want, but it's what it's made for. <laughs> and this one I have already used for the heel, and I managed to match the self striping motif on the reinforcement thread and on the main yarn so it's there is no marling happening basically and it probably won't happen for the toe <laughs> because I'm just gonna use this as it comes and it probably won't match but that's life <laughs> it's okay it's toe of a sock <laughs> um, I have knit the leg to be 68 stitches um, and the foot is, I mean for the heel I did a gusset, so I added six stitches I think, I don't remember, um, because my boyfriend has the same problem as me in that he has a large arch on his foot, so we need deep heels, and instead of doing the gusset to decrease the stitches here to the foot circumference I need, I'm doing gradual decreases along the foot because that's how a foot is shaped. <laughs> I have never been able to understand why we do gussets only here 
Because if you measure your foot, I mean, this part here is bigger than this one. I mean, obviously, it also gets wider on this direction, like this. So it's kind of compensating, but still. Can I have... Do I have something to measure? Yes, I do. So let's see. Right after my heel, if I measure here, I have 22.5, which is uh, 9 inches. So I'm measuring here. <laughs> here. 22.5 and 9 inches. And if I measure to the front, just before my toes, we're getting 20 centimeters, which is 8 inches. So yes, it's smaller. So why would you do the gusset, all the gusset here, and then have something too tight here, and then something probably too loose here, when you could do a gradual decreases along the foot and have the same fit along the whole foot? I don't know, but I'm doing it. So yeah, um, I'm doing two decreases, not four, two, every 10 rows until the end, so that I get a perfect fit for the whole foot. My boyfriend probably doesn't care at all, but I do. <laughs> so this is what's happening. And maybe you can tell, maybe not, a little bit, I don't know. But yeah, this is what's happening on this one. And yeah, I'm just... <laughs> I started this sock just before going to the Swiss Yarn Festival two weeks ago. And it would have been a perfectly portable project for the whole weekend. But I was with my boyfriend for the whole weekend, so, and it's a gift, and I didn't want him to see the sock, so I just cast on something, and then I was like, wait, I need another portable project. <laughs> so I panic cast on something else, uh, which I've, I have uh, unraveled since, but I can still show you. <laughs> so, um, this was cast on, I mean, I wanted to do it for a long time, but I didn't, because... It's self-drafted and I needed to do some thinking, at least I thought. I didn't. <laughs> and it happened anyway, but whatever. Uh, because I have a store-bought cami, sol, t-shirt, no tank, whatever, that I absolutely love and I wear all the time. And it's this one. It's a mango. And for the shaping, what's kind of particular is that the triangle shaping is super small and shallow. And there is... How can I show this to you? And it has a super intense A-line shape. Maybe if I hold it backwards? Yeah. Ah, yeah. There you can see. The waist is much, much larger than the top part. I mean, it's reverse, but you get the idea. <laughs> and it has a peplum, but that doesn't matter. And what I like in this one is that it's kind of, let's say, 5 centimeters positive ease at the bust. And there is much more ease at the waist. And it does... It just has a nice shape, I like it. And I have want I have been wanting to replicate that since a long time in knitting. And I had this leftover bowl of Noro Kakigori in the colorway Inazawa from my piping hot test knit for Lily Kate Friends uh, last year. Uh, I had 70 grams left and it's a DK and I can knit that at a very loose gauge. Uh, so I figured it could work for something flowy like this. 70 grams. Let's try it. Plot twist. I didn't have enough. <laughs> but yeah, let me tell you what happened. So I have a picture of the first attempt. Um, so I did the first two triangles for the front, and then I picked up and the eye cords straps, and then I did the triangles for the back. And I joined everything in the round, and I started doing increases to get the A-line shape. And it was perfect. <laughs> I didn't do any calculations, I didn't even check my gauge, I just need the triangles until it hit about somewhere that was looking nice. <laughs> and yeah, I just did it completely on the fly. And it worked out great. I mean, you can see in the pictures in this one, the back is actually slightly bit larger than the front. It's difficult to show when it's hanging like this, but I have a picture where it's laying flat and you can see the back part is just bigger, both on the sides and on the triangular part. 
and I wanted to do... I have no idea why, but I figured since this is fitting so well, I will just do the same for the <laughs> knitting garment, even though I don't understand why. <laughs> so I did that, and you can see the picture, it worked out fine. But there were three issues. The first one was that the straps were way too short. <laughs> the armhole was too small, and then it was just riding up here, and the v-neck, kind of, was just too high. Um, so I needed to lengthen the straps. But since I hate weaving in ends, <laughs> what I did is when I cast on the front triangles, I left a super long tail, and I used that same tail to pick up the stitches and knit the eye cord, and then I split spliced the yarn to continue for the triangle. So I have zero end <laughs> to weave in, which is delightful, <laughs> if I may say so. Um, so yeah, this is the first triangle, and then the second one. And it's not that I have woven the end, it's just that there, are, there aren't any. But, if I wanted to lengthen the straps, then I needed to cut into it, and then add more yarn. Even if I could split splice some ends, I would still have some to weave in, which I hated. <laughs> I don't know, I was just set on the idea of not having any ends. <laughs> so, I ripped everything out. Also, because I was short on yarn anyway, it was too short, so I decided to skip the increases for the, this one. But it's not far enough for you to see, but I basically don't have any increases on the side, it's straight. Um, to save more yarn and get a little bit more length. And uh, the increases I did, I did something different to avoid having puckering, because I'm doing super rapid increases to get the very low slope <laughs> for the triangles and it was puckering a tiny tiny bit it would probably have blocked out but I wasn't 100% happy so I did it again and you can see here there is no puckering happening I mean this is the cable but it's just the gauge is fine so I'm happy I did it again so that it would be actually perfect and I didn't do standard make ones um, I just did something special Basically, it's like casting on a stitch, but you are casting on in the direction of the knitting, so it's the same as a make one, except you are not using the strand from below, you are just using the working yarn. It's a make one towards or make one away, if you want to look it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's allowing me to have very rapid increases without having any puckering, and to have a loose eye cords, because you are adding more yarn. Anyway. <laughs> So the first try was just a gauge, a big gauge swatch, <laughs> and now this one is very promising. Um, I can't really put it on because it's too small, <laughs> but you get the idea. So yeah, super excited about it, and I hope it will work out. And the plan is, uh, since this won't have the nice A-line shaping I wanted, so this one will serve its purpose of having understood how to make the triangles. There are two different increase rates, by the way. It's much more complicated than it looks. <laughs> um, and the second one I want to make in fingering to see if it works also. Probably will. <laughs> but to get a little bit more drape as this one has. So yeah, I will have this one that will be straight and I will do a fingering weight one that will be A-line and see how it works. So yeah, and I will have used up a leftover that was stressing me out for a year, so everything is perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's it for this one, and so as I mentioned, this was the panic cast on I did, so I was basically <laughs> trying to design something on the fly while, while we were driving to the Swiss Yarn Festival, it was a little bit weird, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, it worked out in the end, so it's fine. Um, so that's it for my work in progress. I don't think I have anything else. I have bought the yarn to make the fingering weights at the festival, but I'm gonna show that to you later. Now, I wanted to do a quick interlude to show you the progress on my Arctic Morning Blanket, which is a design by Jenny's Hope. And it's basically um, a lot of hexagonal color work pieces that are uh, sewn together to form a big blanket. And I'm using two strands of mutilan held together in different colorways for the whole blanket. And let me show you the pile I have for now. <laughs> the, 
because we are at the halfway point, I need to do 29 hexes and I am in my 15th. Wow! <laughs> so yeah, this is massive and I have uh, 14 here and the 15th is um, in the works. So let me show you uh, the ones... Oops, sorry. I haven't shown you, shown you since the last time I did the update, so it's these. So those are the six I have made, five and a half. So this is the design I have done four times, so it's not my favorite, definitely. <laughs> and this one is, I think I messed up something. I don't remember what, but I have messed up something in the color work somewhere. Um, so I have a pop of color at the inside and I'm using uh, I don't remember, it's, it's written on the screen <laughs> for the color. So I have four of these. One, two, three, four. Here are the other three. So yeah, it's just the same. Except these don't have the uh, the mistake that I don't remember what it is, but it's there, but who cares? <laughs> it's invisible anyway. Yeah, uh, and the last design I have made is this one. This one is, has also... Wow! <laughs> it looks like it's frozen. I really like it. Um, yeah, this one definitely has a mistake. This black line is supposed to be in the blue, but the, the chart has reverse colors from what I'm using, so it's very difficult to keep, cra keep track of what color is where. So, yeah. And this one is correct, but you won't see it because it's actually the row that's on the needles, so... Uh, you're not gonna see it. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't closed the middle hole yet. And yeah, this is exactly the half point of the hexes. But I will still then have to sew them all together and knit the border. So this is definitely not the halfway point of the blanket in itself, but I have made quite a good progress, so... I'm Pretty happy about that. Um, I am planning to do, I am trying to do one hexi a week and I am one week late. This is supposed to be done, this was supposed to be done last week, but since I was out during the weekend for the Swiss Yarn Festival, uh, I couldn't make it. I usually do them during the weekend, so I will try to finish this one today or tomorrow and cast on the one for this week and finish it as fast as I can <laughs> to get back on track. But yeah, anyway, if it even if it don't happen, it's not a big deal. One week, more or less, is not going to kill anybody, and certainly not me. <laughs> so yeah, that's the progress for this one. Super happy about it. And uh, that's it for today. So now um, we can have a little talk about my acquisitions and the Swiss Yarn Festival. So. The festival uh, happens every year at the beginning of April and it's the second time I'm going. It's near Zurich, but like very, very far north east of Zurich, which is basically the far end of the Switzerland. <laughs> so it's super far for most of Switzerland, which is weird in my opinion, but whatever. Uh, so it's quite a, quite a ride to get there, even though Switzerland is small. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it's still like four hours of train to get to the venue and by car it's like two hours and a half. So yeah, it's a, for us it's a journey, <laughs> I guess. For people in America it's a very short ride, but yeah, for, for us it's a lot. So I wanted to, in French we say, do two hits with one rock, <laughs> basically. Faire d'une pierre deux coups. So I wanted to go there for another reason than just the festival, so what I decided to do was to find a nice climbing crag so that we could go climb with my boyfriend and then on the Friday and then I go to the festival on Saturday and then we climb again on Sunday and then come home. And my boyfriend has a super nice van, it's a Volkswagen T3 and it's super cute and we just love to go on adventures with it and it was the perfect occasion. So we did that. I had some trouble finding a crag actually next to Zurich in the place where the venue was because it's actually a very flat part of Switzerland. <laughs> there are just no mountains around. So yeah, I struggled a little bit. And I managed to find something uh, in Germany, the very very southern part of Germany that was actually just near the frontier where the venue is. 
but it was um, my boyfriend is kind of a hardcore climber <laughs> I mean he climbs on a very high level I would say and there was basically nothing for him uh, in the whole Schwarzwald um, area so we couldn't really go climb there because he would be bored <laughs> So we had to find something else. So what we did is we... There is a place in Basel, which is kind of on the way from here to Zurich, where there is actually very nice climbing cracks with very hard roots so that he can climb something. <laughs> and so we did that. On the, Saturday, no, on the Friday, we took the van. I have a fun picture here. <laughs> and we drove to Basel to climb. It was in the Falkenfluh area. It was in Tüfleten which is the crag where there is the first 9A of Switzerland. If you know what the 9A is, it's a pretty hardcore climbing grade. Even so hardcore that even my boyfriend doesn't touch it, but yeah, it was funny to see it. It's a historical piece of climbing for the country. Um, and uh, yeah, so when we drove, um, when we took the bus in the morning, as you can see, it's an old bus, so it's cool and everything, but it's also Old. So there is, of course, issues that happen quite often, and this was the first um, outing for the bus um, for the year. So we weren't really sure it was going to work or not. <laughs> and last month, actually, the gas pedal broke. <laughs> when my boyfriend moved it, he had something to do on it, and he just wanted to take it from the garage to another place, and yeah, he broke the gas pedal. <laughs> so he had to uh, repair that. And the only other thing that didn't work is that we had a flat tire. But fortunately, uh, fortunately, we had something to... How do you say that? I have no idea. I have no idea about the technical terms for car or van or whatever. <laughs> to inflate the tire. <laughs> so it was fine. We could uh, just leave uh, after resolving the issue. So we made it to Basel. Uh, we climbed and then we decided to do the one hour route we had left to Zurich um, the evening. So that we would just have to get up in the morning, eat, and then my boyfriend would just drop me off. It was a five minute ride to the, um, to the festival from the place we chose to stay. It was just a, just a spot in the forest <laughs> with the flat ground. It was nothing special, no toilets, no anything, it was just a forest. <laughs> so we woke up Saturday morning, we prepared everything, and then I put on my nice knitting clothes to go to the festival, and the van wasn't starting up! Yay! <laughs> so we were stuck in the forest, and there was obviously nobody there because it was a very remote place. And of course the van was parked down a very small slope, so it was, it was impossible for us to just push the van out and just get it to start up. Um, how do you say that? When you push a car in the going down slope and you can start up the motor by just having the car moving forward by itself. I don't know how it's called, but this. <laughs> um, so yeah, we were kind of stuck. So we started using uh, like, like one of those big cables to uh, tie the bus to a tree and then tug on it. I mean, yeah, it's difficult. I don't know the technical terms, but yeah, whatever. And while we were trying to do that, some random people just showed, they had two cars and we were like please can we use your battery to plug our battery because we figured it was probably a battery problem to start up the van and it was a very young guy with a very young girl I mean very little, probably like 20 years old and I'm not really sure they had done that in their life so he knew what he was supposed to do but we didn't check the guy did it correctly and maybe he didn't because it didn't work and we were pretty sure it was a battery problem. So yeah, we couldn't start the van, but now we were four, so we asked them kindly if they could help us push the van out of the hole it was in, so that we could get it on the, on the road that had a slope, so that we could go down the slope and start up the, the van when it was moving forward. So we did that, and fortunately it worked, so <laughs> my boyfriend could drop me off at the festival, I almost didn't make it. <laughs> and then he came back to the forest, battery change. <laughs> so I was saying, so my boyfriend parked on top of the slope so that he could uh, move forward without anyone pushing him, so that he could start the van by himself and then come and get me up at the festival at the end of the day. <laughs> it was a little bit weird, but yeah, we managed. 
And then we decided to just go home because it was too complicated to find... Yeah, it was just too complicated to have the van in this state and to just carelessly climb again one more day and not knowing if we could start to run up again for the next day, so yeah, we just had to go home. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of sad, but yeah, we still climbed on the second day, but it was closer to where we live, so not as cool as planned, but still a nice weekend anyway. So I wanted to show you the acquisitions I have from the festival, and yes, this bag is full until here. <laughs> So yeah, I'll try to make it short. I have a plan for everything, so I'm going to show you the yarn and the design, um, the pattern I have planned for it. So first, it's not yarn. <laughs> this is a needle a DPN holder, and I just fell in love with it. I just love the colors. It's super well made. I love the, the golden accents. I'm not sure you can really tell, but... Yeah, and it's kind of... this is the DPN I'm using for my blanket, and it's obviously too big. <laughs> but I knew it, and I think this is going to be perfect for my smaller DPNs, because I have some. And also, if I use um, Magic Loop for socks, I have small um, needles for that, and I can also put the needle in here, like this, for example. If I have my project laying on the needle here, I can just... Put it like this, and my needles are protected, and my project is protected, and it's working perfectly. So yeah, that's first purchase. And then I bought at this store, which is definitely the one I have wanted to spend the most money on. <laughs> it's a CD 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 spint CD spint. I don't know. And this is I have three skeins to here, but it's three skins of hand-dyed lace weight, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a super deep, um, like between cool and warm, but probably more cool grey, and it's lace weight, as I mentioned. So it's 100% silk, and it's 800 meters per skin, so you may be wondering why do I need three skins of 800 meters. I'm not going to hold it double. <laughs> I'm gonna need this single threaded to do a skirt. So you may remember uh, the skirt I have knit in uh, linen by De Rome Natura. And it's this one. And I love it so much, but it's kind of a purpley grey that's not very wearable for me. And this is more neut neutral. And it's super th super thin, <laughs> so I want to knit a whole skater skirt in lace weight yarn. <laughs> it's gonna take ages. This is like 1,800 meters. I'm not sure I'm gonna use any everything, but yeah, it's definitely more yardage than sweater, so it's gonna take a long time, but it's gonna be so beautiful. I just can't wait. So yeah, that's something I'm super excited about. And then I have bought, this was a uh, completely impulsive boat, the only impulsive um, buy of the festival. <laughs> and this is handspun silk and viscose blend. So it's by Textile Manufacture Tans. And it's, the fiber was hand dyed by the husband and it was spun by the How do you say the husband but in woman? <laughs> the bride? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, anyway. So yeah, it's a couple and the man dies and the woman spins. And so yeah, it's hand spun, silk and viscose, and it's so beautiful. I mean, I'm so excited about this one. This was sold as a kit for a scarf, but I didn't buy the pattern scarf. I want to make a Soho top by Kajui with this one. I have knit already two Soho tops, but the first one um, is in cotton and the gauge was a little bit too tight. I made the mistake of not changing the pattern gauge and trying to knit too tight for the yarn I had, so it's just 
a bit too stiff and the armholes are too small. And the second one I have knit using Linen Quill by Pearl Soho Worsted. And it's super itchy, like unbelievably itchy. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> so yeah, I have been wanting to knit another one for a while and this one is gonna be perfect. I have, I think, 400 meters, which is perfect. Uh, yeah, so that's it. It was, of course, super expensive because it's a uh, hand span, but I think it's really worth it. And I just love the darker spots that are going on with the very light, fresh green. It looks so cool. I love it. <laughs> and then I have um, Feliz Punto. I'm saying that with a French, terrible French accent, but yeah, Feliz y Punto. Um, this is 75% 75, 75 silk and 25% lino, linen, and it's super drapey. And I have two skins of fingering weight, and I want to make um, the tier number one by my favorite thing is knitwear, but it's not size inclusive, so probably more the lakes tee by Ozeda, which is basically the same, except it had it has ribbings for the finishings and I really don't like ribbing on summer garments and I just prefer the finishings on the T number one so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do <laughs> probably buy... Uh, no, I don't know but yeah, I have two skins for that I have been wanting to knit this garment for such a long time and now I have the yarn for it I'm so excited! <laughs> yeah and then I have two skins of uh, Pernel by Natisea that you see, I don't know. Uh, this is um, a French brand, and this yarn is kind of special because it is hemp, 100% hemp, I think. Yes, and it's super rough. <laughs> like this feels like raffia. It's just, yeah, terrible to the touch. But it softens up so much with blocking. I knew it already, but um, when I went to the to the sellers. Um, I could touch the samples and I was like, wow, <laughs> this is unbelievable. So now I'm convinced and I could buy the last two of this color <laughs> from the festival. And it's funny because actually, um, so the store is Natisea, Natisea. And she did this yarn in collaboration, I think, with um, Pollen, which is a Swiss designer that lives in the same town as me. And she was there at the at the booth. And when I came to the booth, I was wearing the skirt I, men I was mentioning earlier. And they started telling me, oh, that skirt is so beautiful, I'm following you on Instagram. And I was like, what? <laughs> You're following me? <laughs> and actually she knew about the skirt. And they were also wearing skirts that are designed in this yarn, um, which is pretty unusual. I mean, not a lot of designers design skirts. And it was very beautiful, of course, and we were all like watching our skirts. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I like this one. Oh, it's not see-through. Oh, no. <laughs> it, was, it was just so cute and nice. <laughs> I loved it. So, yeah, I bought this not to make a skirt, uh, but to make um, Tolsta Tank by the Korea Bea. Uh, I think she put out the test knit call yesterday. I did sign up, but we will see if I get chosen or not. But if I don't, um, I can make another of this. If I cannot wait until the pattern <laughs> is put out. So yeah, that's the plan. Either a torso tank or a whatever A-line came me doesn't have a name. It's just something I'm doing. <laughs> so yeah, that's the plan for this one. And then I have this. I have two of these, which is BC Gown Lino, which is 100% linen, and it's a fingering weight. And it's very, I mean, you can see the thread here. It's very fine. I love linen. <laughs> I just have a thing with it. And yeah, with this one, I'm planning also a torsta tank, but in the fingering weight gauge. Or, uh, again, I will do the fingering weight version of this one. This was much, much cheaper than the um, hand dyed yarns I have bought before. So yeah, I can also buy more if I want to do the torsta tank and the thing, <laughs> A-line thing. <laughs> so yeah, I really really like it. I'm super excited to try it out. And the last one <laughs> is, I bought those two at the same shop. It's the N13, N13 I guess, shop, which is in 
somewhere in the east of Switzerland, <laughs> super far away from me, but it's a very big shop. And this is Studio Linen by Erika Knight. Erika Knight. Uh, Erika Knight. I don't <laughs> can do the British English accent. Whatever. I have five skins. Those are 50 gram skins. And it's again linen! <laughs> it is 85% um, recycled and 50% new uh, linen. And it looks completely random at first. I mean, it just. I mean, it's drapey, but it's also kind of rough. It's definitely not soft. It feels like super dry cotton. And if you have touched Antigone by De Rome Natura, it's much less. This one is much less softer, so it's... I had already seen it in, a, in my local yarn shop, but I was like, meh, it's just random. But at the booth, I saw uh, multiple swatches knit in this and blocked. And guys, it's so beautiful! <laughs> Once it's blocked, it was amazing! I couldn't believe it. So, I bought some. <laughs> um, and with this one, I'm planning to knit a um, t-shirt, like a summer t-shirt. And I have an idea for a construction I like, I wanted to try, and I couldn't find anything on Ravelry that really used it in the way I wanted, so I'm gonna try it. It's a DK weight. And yeah, I'm also so excited about this one. Uh, that swatch was so beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's my... I will try and take a skin of each in my small hands to show you the damage that was done. <laughs> yeah, so that's everything I bought. And you can maybe tell I went more to the greens and greys, but mostly because in this one, there was no nice, I mean, no colors I liked other than grey, so I didn't really have a choice somehow. But I also wanted something very neutral so that I could wear the skirt with a lot of stuff. So, neutral. Uh, I just liked the forest green. <laughs> there was not a lot of choice because this is hand dyed and hand spun, so it was just what was available, and I, I like it in the end, so nice. This one, uh, there are a lot of choices on the whole Lino uh, brand. Not a brand um, line, I guess. And there are definitely only my, like five colors at the festival. But I really wanted it. <laughs> I could have waited and just ordered some. But there is a, like, I wanted to support the shop. So I bought some. And actually the color is perfectly fine because it's light for the summer. And it's neutral also, so actually it's it's beautiful, I like it. And I like blue, and there was nothing else than grey. <laughs> so I ended up with a lot of grey in the end, but I think it's a good thing because so many of my clothes are like a super obnoxious, intense color, and I'm having so much trouble pairing my clothes together. So I'm actually pretty happy about the, all the neutrals I bought. So, yeah, that was the festival. <laughs> I think I put all the yarn on top of my notes, so now I can't read what's <laughs> written. So, uh, for the festival, uh, do I have anything else to add? Oh, yes, as I mentioned, I was wearing my, my skirt, my beautiful skirt, and <laughs> there was a moment, it was so cute. There were two women, I think they were like, they were pretty old, like there were two grandmas and they literally ran to me. <laughs> they didn't walk, they ran. <laughs> and they stopped me and started talk to, talking to me but in Swiss German and I don't speak Swiss German unfortunately so I had no idea what they were talking about but they were showing my skirts and pointing it and saying words I think mean something like, wow it's beautiful. <laughs> So I just said, oh, I don't speak German, and they were like, oh, no, it's such a shame. I mean, I could understand a few words, but basically they said, that skirt is so beautiful. Um, what is it knitted with? Knitted with? And, oh, no, I don't speak French or English, and, but I really like it. It's so beautiful. And then they left, but yeah, they were just so cute. <laughs> it was just so fun that they ran to me. Yeah, that was nice. And I also met with my friend Marie, we've been chatting for a while on uh, Instagram 
and it was nice to finally meet. I also met her mother. <laughs> it's so cool that they meet, uh, that they knit together as daughter and mother. So yeah, it was. We had a fun time together, and I also met Natasha Rombi. Wow, <laughs> I really really love her work. So it was funny because actually I just saw her uh, passing by, and I was so shocked that I couldn't really turn around and speak to her. So I was like. Did I see who I just think I saw? <laughs> and then I met with Marie and I said to her, um, did I, did you see Natasha Ronby? And she was like, yeah, of course, I'm, I have a course with her later. And I was like, oh wow, <laughs> I had no idea. And she said to me, but if you just wait around the stairs here, she's gonna pass at some point because she needs to go up to the room where we have the course. So if you want to see her again, just wait here. And just as she, she said that, Natasha Hornby comes by. <laughs> So this time I jumped on her and I yeah, stopped her, said that I really liked her work and um, yeah, I managed to exchange a few words with her and she was so cute and nice. I'm so happy. Um, I didn't think to take a picture because I didn't and uh, it's actually for the whole festival I didn't take footage or anything nor for the whole climbing trip because yeah, it just I just like to live in the moment and whenever I'm doing something I really love, like being at a festival or climbing, I just completely forget about my phone or whatever and then I don't have pictures, I don't have videos, I don't have anything, so you will have to believe me, but yeah, it was super nice and I had a great time and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, for life, well, I just talked to you about the festival and the only other thing that happened is that I went climbing, <laughs> as always. The season is starting up pretty strong, the, the days are getting longer and it's getting warmer so it's really nice to climb outside again. Actually it's too hot, <laughs> it's getting difficult. Uh, we need to find um, cliffs that are facing north, otherwise if we are in the sun it's just too hot. So yeah, it's already kind of difficult but it's still the nice season. And I wanted to show you in the precedent episode I briefly mentioned there is sometimes a strange um, meteorological phenomenon that happens in which the Sahara sands get lifted up by the wind and then pushed over the sea over to uh, Europe and it just stays in the air for a few days sometimes, even sometimes less, sometimes more, it just depends on the, on the winds. And then we have a super weird ominous yellow orangey light for a few days and this time I managed to catch it um, on camera, so when we came back from climbing uh, last Sunday, we were... <laughs> so for the whole day it was just orange and weird. It's like there is a smog in the air, but it's orange. I mean, it's very, very strange. <laughs> and when we came home uh, from, the, from the climbing crab, crag, there was the sunset with the orange Sahara sand. And yeah, I managed to take a footage of that so I can show you at the end. And that's it for today, which is already quite a lot. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you enjoy your springtime. It's my favorite time of the year. I'm just so happy <laughs> that everything is getting green. The days are getting longer. Yeah, I'm just really, really enjoying myself. So I hope you are too. And I hope you find time to do the things that you love. And if you also find the time to give me a like <laughs> or leave me a nice comment, that's really really appreciated. I always love to read what you have to say. So yeah, don't hesitate and also you can also subscribe if you are interested to see more. And yeah, I think that's all for today. So I will see you in the next one. Bye!